American Drive-In is a 1985 sex comedy directed by Krishna Shaw and starring Emily Longstreth, Patrick Curtin, Rhonda Selesnome, Joel Bennett, John Rice, and Phil Fondacaro. Oh boy, another fucking van. Jack and Bobby Ann are on their way to the drive-in, passing these guys and practicing improper lane usage. Hey, uh, I'm a friend of your father's. Zombie 1 and 2? So is it Dawn of the Dead and Zombie, or Zombie and Zombie 2? Either way, it's pretty cool. It's a hotbed. A seething hotbed. Daddy, nobody does drugs here. Oh, this is the connection. Mary Jane, pot, weed. Marijuana, grass, tea. Hell yeah, I need to go to the drive-in. This smells like a possible plot point. Strange young lady, what's the movie? Hard Rock Zombies. Hard Rock Zombies? That's disappointing. Crap, horse piss. Which reminds me. I think we found those drugs. Oh, wait, it's only liquor. Thanks, sweetheart. That's ten years, pal. Is that Return of the Jedi merch? George hired every stinking midget on the West Coast for Jedi, but you couldn't get me in. You are not earning your ten percent. The ironic part is that actor Phil Fondacaro was actually in Return of the Jedi. This councilman is going to use his kid as a narc. You, son. I don't want to. Don't be a goddamn coward, boy. Sarge wants to come in for free and uses his charm to get his way. If we got to sneak in, who knows how many speakers might get ripped off the posts in the dark. And when Sarge and the boys go in, they turn the drive-in into another edition of Thunderdome! Danny, no! But Margie, I love you. I don't want to! How romantic. Jack then proposes to Bobby Ann during a screening of Hard Rock Zombies. Once again, it's happened on this show. I would rather be watching the movie that they're watching than the movie that they're in. And this woman is operating a mobile cat house. Yeah. Too bad. First time's half price. You want to see my ID? Nope, you pass. 20 bucks up front. It's my first time. Okay, then 40. You said it was only half price first time. The kid's cute. You make me puke. I like her. No! Why not? I won't like it. Oh, so what? I guess somebody is getting head. Is that a Nazi midget zombie? I really wish I was watching this movie. I love you, Bobby. I love you too, Jackie. Now you're mine forever. I would have to say that sounds as bad to her as it does to me. The gang has a big 10-4 on the CV about giving Jack a beer so that he'll take a piss. And Sarge can make his move on Bobby Ann. Holy shit, did Michelob pay for product placement in this thing? It's Michelob. Yeah, man, it's, uh, Michelob. <laughs> huh? Yeah, really, no thanks. All right, two Michelobes. Guys, you just I... take the fucking beer, man? Jack shoots hey, down to sharing a beer, and the tension in the shag and wagon continues. Come on. Baby, I'm just... Maybe we just better shut up. Yeah, probably a good idea. Then Councilman Winter sends his son to Sarge to score some weed, who invites him up to make the deal, but that will be complete bullshit. He calls the news about the supposed bust, but it turns out to be a carload of old ladies with the councilman being stopped by an angry mob. Back at the van, we get more product placement with Sarge offering Jack a bag of Lay's potato chips. Bet you can't eat just one. Eat two. 
Get thirsty. You still got the Michelob. Then we find out the winner's daughter is out getting the D instead of the T. It's the sound! It's the sound! Oh my god, this is my big scene! Another tradition that has continued into this film is the radio broadcast of people fornicating. At the van, Bobby Ann lets Jack know her reservations about marriage, and Jack is sensitive to her needs. It's not a goddamn thing. I bought that with more money and love than I've ever had in my whole life before. If you think it's a goddamn thing, well, you can... Why don't you just go to hell? Jesus! Jack stomps off and Sarge and the boys make their move. That's kidnapping and GTA. Danny, I can't. I can't. You don't love me. Danny, I do. I'll do anything for you but that. And I would do anything for love. But I won't do that. You son of a bitch, God. Well, you should be honored. I mean, we do not do this with just like, you know, anybody. We know your kind, country girl. See, us guys, we stick together. This sure did get dark in a hurry. Well, at least Jack is having a moment with the blowjob guy. Now, I don't treat her gentle. I should be nicer. Yeah. Well, that's it. I should try gentle. That may be better than forcing her head into your crotch. Winters goes to buy what he thinks are drugs, but it turns out to be a piece of ass instead. It's going to become... This is going to cost you, mister! <laughs> All right, free girl. Every time. Open sesame! <laughs> this is supposed to be a comedy. What the fuck? Jack arrives for the save and gets the living shit kicked out of him by the gang. No! Bobby, I get out of here! Go! Oh! Want to stop your comedy dead in its tracks? Add a possible gang rape to a beating a la The Passion of the Christ. Sarge then stalks Bobby in the dark. Come out and play Oh. You know, I've said it before. I'll say it again. And I'm sure I'm going to say it hundreds of more times before this is all over. But don't reference a good movie in your shitty movie, especially when it's just crashed like the fucking Hindenburg. She doubles back, loads Jack in the van, and hauls ass out of there. As they leave, a TV chopper arrives to pick up the drug tape that Junior made while his father was busting a drug ring. You could just send it in a fucking car? <laughs> That's a cool shot. We're introduced to this guy. You see, when the girls bend over and pick up a hot dog or a hamburger, then... You're a creep. <gasps> Who cares? You're a creep. <sighs> She's 12 years old, man. You're sick. Hey, look, someday that little girl may be famous, and then I can tell people that I saw her tits. Dear Lord, what kind of fucking movie is this? Bobby goes to the hospital and as Jack lays there in a coma, decides that she loves him and heads back to the drive-in for fucking vengeance. Hot damn, she just picked up a piece. I don't have... I don't have quite the taste for popcorn as I thought I did. I guess he's a little short. Back to your cars, you little buggers! Watch the grown-ups... Hump their way through another movie, yeah! I am honestly running out of things to say. There are so many plot points running right now, and they keep adding more as the film goes on. Hey, look, a blow-up doll! I wanna hold your hand. Hey, 
I'm the one who makes the shitty puns around here. Sarge is going to get some until... A gun! She picks up the guys, forces them to the van, and ties them up. But they break free and take her hostage. Jack wakes up and heads back to the theater as the gang decide to head out for some privacy. Those fucking kids. Then the theater turns into pure mayhem. And after all the lawsuits, this drive-in was bulldozed and turned into a Walmart. Holy shit, Sarge was truthful with that kid. Councilman Winters is busted with a hooker, and Bobby gets the gun back. And Jack steals a motorcycle. And the family have a tender moment. And Bobby prepares to execute the gang. Wait, what? Holy shit, this has gone off the rails. The last one inside the fence will be shot, so they fight, leaving Sarge as the sole survivor. Mass, nah, shoot the fucker! Yeah. Whoa! She ends up firing in the air, making Sarge look like a bitch. Hey, here's your roses for almost being raped and attempting to murder white trash. What the fuck was that? I thought this was a teen sex comedy, but this really went toward the unexpected. And that's not always a good thing. Imagine if Biff Tannen said, Open Sesame and fondled Lorraine's crotch at the end of Back to the Future. That film may not be as beloved as it is today. I get it as trying to be a sort of American graffiti. The problem is the plot to that film isn't coked up, if you know what I mean, and the plot points just don't keep layering themselves like shit out of dog's ass. Oh, and I also gave a fuck about the characters in American Graffiti. American Drive-In is trash. It's not even good for being a bad movie. It's totally useless and should be forgotten. Except by assholes that are trying to watch every movie that ran on a basic cable TV show in the 1990s. Shit! You goddamn coward, cop-out, broad!